every year, if I thought we, you, we could have seen a situation on that the, the International Labour Conference in June, which is supposed to come in June, is cancelled. We are concentrating on the one which comes next year. Uh -huh. This is where we meet as governments, employers, employees, to report uh, what is happening in our countries. So meaning that we derive a certain potential from somewhere. So the workers are not there in, in places of work by accident. They, are, they derive certain mandate from international standards. Uh -huh. And that's why even when you establish a company, you are supposed to establish a company. And if you want to employ, you should be a, a giant of a company to employ. Don't just employ because you have, uh, it's just employment. You should have capacity to pay the workers and you should have capacity to, again, uh, uh, administer or practice decent work amongst your, your workers. Yeah. And decent work has got certain pillars in it, ingredients in it, which are supposed to be defined for one to, for, for a worker to be called, a, to, to be classified as a decent worker. There are so many things like social protection issues. Mm -hmm. Are there medical schemes? Social security issues. Are there pension schemes available for this worker? The like the NAPSA, the, the, if it's the government workers, public service pension fund, mm -hmm. and others. All those are supposed to be present in their working life. And, and largely, I think um, they're, they're clearly stipulated and followed mostly by, uh, you know, civil servants, uh, the, by the government itself with its uh, civil service. And clearly there's a notion that um, job seekers are more interested in getting jobs or getting employed in government because, uh, you know, in the private sector, they get away with so many things. They can float the uh, minimum wage and get away with it. They, they can pay low salaries mistreat the workers and so everybody when they want to get employed the targeting government your take on it's, yeah it's just a pitch that is happening like that uh, you see when you look at the the private sector should also inject a lot of uh, hope in the country on that uh, we we might have we might have lost it at privatization when we used to have parastatal companies, in every sector we used to have a parastatal. The, 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 the mining sector, ZCCM at that time. The retailing, we used to have the ZCPC, Moise stores, and all those things in that order. And we used to have the, the National Drug Company. Most of the ZESCO is still a state company, and the, all the water utilities were under the local authorities and so on. Mm -hmm. So we were managing the economy because it was quite uh, uh, broadened where we have the parastatal. In, even those companies which were coming in as private companies mm -hmm. competed and uh, still paid as private companies. We used to tailoring companies textile companies are available, car assembly companies are available in Livingstone and the rest. So all those who, which came at that time practiced the proper and decent jobs for the people. Mm -hmm. We lost it at privatization because now the people who bought the companies, the, the, the private investors came in and their role was just to maximize profits, mm -hmm. externalize resources and other things. So things came and we accepted it uh, like that. The mining companies were, were taken up by the foreign investors. And then we, we seen a lot of funny reports. I can still lead you to a report which was done by Tambo, Tambo Mbeki when he was uh, tasked by African Union to come into African scenario and uh, establish how resources are being externalized from the, the, the extractive industries to, to go somewhere. So, so there was a, there's a, a quite a stinky report which talks about uh, how gloomy a picture is in Africa on how a lot of resources are being externalized 
throughout the year. And then you see a lot of, it's, it's done in a graph where in terms of Zambia, we are losing more billions in the, uh, illicit financial flows. Mm -hmm. And that was still examined and there is evidence to that effect. You look at certain c countries in Africa. Africa Union wanted this report and this report is available. You can still get it online from yeah. Tambo Beck report, Beck report on the illicit financial flows. It will show you a gloomy picture on how the resources are being externalized. Exactly. Now we allowed companies to come mine with us, be with us in, ex, uh, in extractive industry. And when you look at that report, we are losing a lot. Okay. In these companies... And the workers themselves are, uh, are, are lo anything. losing a lot because now the idea is about uh, maximizing profits. Exactly. And so, then at the end of the day, you don't get much as a country. So, so that's now, why you find that even when government uh, gets tough now on the labor court now, mm -hmm. a lot of Companies are complaining. Say so now we are being fixed now on the labor court. We are not going to get the profits because the labor court is defining certain benefits to the workers, which were not there. But those benefits, the labor court has not just come by accident. It's following standards which go, are going on in the world. Exactly. It's following the standards which are there in the, the ILO standards prescribed. And then we were all, before the labor code was uh, enacted, we were living as a Zambia on precedences of the court judgments. Okay. Where, for example, I can still take you to uh, issues of gratuities. Mm -hmm. We could see that the courts helped, helped the Zambian companies on how do you pay gratuities, how do you prescribe that. On issues of leave, it, we still had a lot of court precedences mm -hmm. deciding on us. The law was not there to prescribe what things could be there. Interpretations were rushing to court and so on. All but right, here's but a situation. How do, you, how do you bridge the gap and uh, ensure that uh, the workforce is a satisfied workforce, at least to expected standards? This is now the, why, how now we are trying to, to see how we can now operationalize the the Labor Code 2019, which is now talks to issues, which talks to leave, where leave is a right now for a worker. And in some developed countries, the, 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 the social protection um, shops have taken over even to administer certain leave. For example, if a, a lady goes on maternity leave, mm -hmm. and then it's the, this lady also extends the maternity leave. You will see somebody from the insurance company coming in to sit in for that lady who is on leave. And the salary is coming from the insurance company to pay this lady. Even if this lady goes on leave for six months, there will be no shortfall of a, 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 a vacancy there because the insurance company will bring in this person. But, and but that's how we are moving. And that's yeah. the social protection uh, act which is under draft, where we are moving to, because we participated a lot in, the, in, in formulating the social protection. But it, it has delayed because the component of health insurance was removed from it. Otherwise, it's supposed to be a, a, a consolidated document, which the could have issue, helped a lot. The other issue has been implementation. We'll have very good uh, documents, very good laws, but the implementation in itself is um, really leaves much to be desired unless the implementers well, yeah, look are at, gaining something out of it. When you look at the way we are, the, the laws now are being formulated, you see, there is the, the issue of uh, penalties and the issues of uh, uh, certain prosecuting element in it probably the compliance will still be there. You see, the, the other issue is the, the way the Minister of Labor also is uh, structured. Mm -hmm. Because if we, it had all the staffing in all the districts to follow up the labor abusers, the inspectors, it can still help out. We still have a lot of agriculture settlements, farms in certain areas 
where the labor inspector cannot even reach there. And in some areas, there are no labor inspectors. All the districts in Zambia, we, are, we can't claim to say all the districts are occupied. So majority of them do not have labor inspectors. But if we employed all these to look at labor standards, you will see to it that these companies will follow the procedures and will even respect the minimum wages and certain payment procedures. Mm -hmm. And because the labor inspector is there to give, uh, to give guidance and to even prosecute in some cases. There's been but rampant accusations of the uh, labor ministry in itself not mm -hmm. helping out much because you know they, they you know the the, the the way they come out and they think uh, we have uh, downplayed the, the functions of this uh, labor ministry i think at this stage we see in some com countries where you expect proper productivity mm. the means of labor is highly funded but i think the funding levels are very low there that's like I was talking about when you take a survey to most of these districts. They have not even employed the labor officers and what. The funding levels are very low. They can't reach out. But if you, you looked at it as a productive ministry, where you would say, let it collaborate with ministries like finance and maybe means of uh, uh, planning and means of uh, community development. And all these, if they collaborate together, they will see how the ministry can work very well. But, uh, and again, if it can also increase on the staffing levels, you will see to it that they, this cannot be a problem. Because if they are checking on productivity, because the Ministry of Labor can still get into a company and check whether there is productivity going on and there is, whether the production coming out is is. A, is shared even by uh, uh, the profits are shared by the camp by the workers whether the workers have part to that they can also examine a collective agreement to see this collective agreement signed is it is this share these workers have uh, received is it matching the living wage uh -huh. what are the profits they can still inspect that Okay, the mandate answered. is quite wide yeah. on that it's not just utilized. Okay. They can check the books of the company and see whether the profits are being shared even with the workers. Okay. The workers also themselves, at collective bargaining stage, they can also question the profits and losses the company is making. They can also share the profits. But there is also a problem with the veil of secrecy. Okay. They can't get into, the companies cannot get into exp uh, disclosure. There's lack of disclosure of certain things. Because now these workers have become vulnerable because they are given short-term contracts. Mm -hmm. If it's one year, two years, and this worker cannot even be very active in trade unions. And that's why you will see a situation where there's a, there's a call that maybe trade unionism is dying, what and so on, in parasito companies. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the reason is simple. When you, this person is given a two-year contract, is involved in trade union issues, and then at the end of two years, he has to renew a contract. You find that at one stage, he has to get down. They may, they may, in some cases, like with the cases we are solving in one hospitality industry, uh. in Livingston, where they could even tell them, now we are renewing your contract. I should not see you in the okay, trade union. Okay. So you and this person you will choose whether to be employed, employed or, or to, to get out of that. Yeah. So but those are some of the things. And then if we can say, now when you talk to the labor court, it mm. will even still show you how many times you renew a contract and how many times can the contract become permanent and personal. And that's why you can look at securing of a job. Now what does this person do? Now coming back to the question, which you said the more favorable security of jobs in public service as well. You will see this person working in this prosthetic company, trying to study maybe to be a nurse, to be a teacher and so on, so that maybe he runs away from this uh, oppressed situation of having contracts which are short term, uh -huh. so that he goes to a longer term 
contractual situation of permanent and personable, such as security of the job. Exactly. So I think what, that's what it is. You've answered that side. But yes. then there's also the angle where the workers, the employees, have got very little confidence in the Ministry of Labour itself and their, their officials because we've had situations where the Ministry of Labour is there, they represent, they, they attend to, to cases, companies make agreements with them and yet go against them despite I think they, they, having they, they, the they, knowledge they, that the Minister of Labour itself knows about this case and we have signed an agreement to say this is what is going to be and yet get away with that. I so, think, I think the, the only problem comes, still comes back. If, uh, if we, uh, the, the contacts of employment, if we leave them the way it is where there is no attractive situation where the unionization is taking place, the Minister of Labour will still be suffering from such problems. Because if this person is not unionized, mm -hmm. because I'm coming from ZSTU, yes. from ZSTU we cut across the grievance handling, mm -hmm. where even the workers were not unionized in some cases, still come back to us. And that's why I pity the Minister of Labour in most cases. <clears throat> because these people who are not unionized, still get back to the means of labor uh, to, uh, to, to complain. Because mm -hmm. the means of labor will ask them, were you unionized? They will tell them, no, we are not unionized. And they have uh, that duty to answer to that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the unionization aspect. If the, we could coin a situation mm -hmm. where we bring about security of jobs, where people can be union, can form and belong to trade unions, it will still help out mm -hmm. to see a situation where the people will run to unions. But in situations where they have short contracts, and the majority of the jobs in Zambia, especially in the parastatal sector, mm. the majority of them are in short contracts and they are not unionized. Those are the customers you see at the means of labor. And they have no, they have no, they can't get away with it because the, they, they still have to nurse that. Mm -hmm. In most areas where we have unionized, the trade unions handle such because it's in, in the recognition agreement that they can still attend to certain issues which are negotiable issues, issues which can be handled as grievances and steps of grievance handling are established in the recognition agreements. Right. But those without recognition agreements who are not unionized because they are now customers for the means of okay. Labor and then certain companies still claim they have not employed up to 25. Okay. And then the formation of a trade union, you have to get to the 25 or more. If you are less than that, you are applying now for exemptions. By the time you are applying for exemptions to the Ministry of Labor to form a union in that area, you find that those who are eligible to join mm -hmm. have been fired or the contracts are finished. You start afresh. All right. Yes. Your take on uh, the taxes that have been slapped on already suffering Zambian employees, such as the health insurance scheme. I heard you explain the good side of it, but um, well, it's a it's a good scheme. The health insurance scheme is a good scheme, but the way it started is not the way we be. We wanted it to be. We wanted it to be a, a scheme which is a, a risk pooling a scheme which can attract the informal sector and other sectors of the economy to come in, not just to target the former workers. When you target the former workers, the deduction you are looking for is a salary deduction. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of deductions. They have the pension deductions. They have other deductions. Then you bring in the health insurance. You target just the salary. You us were looking at it from a playaway type of contribution to the system. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, through airtime, you can still get the you can still get the the deductions. Through targets, you can still get a certain percentage to go to that. Even through NAPSA, where we are saying, let us not fragment the deductions. Even under NAPSA, you just increase a bit of it. Or zero point something, mm -hmm. so that you do that. And then we didn't want it to be controlled, even by means of health. 
we wanted it to be controlled by an independent uh, insurer who should now be servicing the Ministry of Health right. for, the, for, the, for, the, for, for the claims. Now you find that it's now the judge and the jury uh -huh. where the Ministry of Health has to collect the, the money from the insurance, from, for the health insurance. It has to supervise the insurance authority. It has to operate the hospitals through the same. And you can't just have everything. We wanted it to be quite independent. A social security or social protection institution feeding into the health, and the health is just doing the claims. And here's the situation of the COVID things. Exactly. Those who are even insured, there could have even been a deliberate way of saying, you get your masks through such a shop. Those who are under this insurance, the masks have been paid for, get them from that. Exactly. And they are, not, they are just buying. Get your what, your medicines through such a pharmacy where we have already paid. Just go with your card. You collect and then it goes on. Now, the way it is, it's the way we have mishandled it. We wanted it to be a risk pooling where every person in the country should be contributing to the scheme. So that all the standards could just be the same through certain payments like airtime exactly. and through the toll gates, exactly. the but markets, I was getting also paid for that. Now, let's get to the issue of the COVID-19 itself. So far, we've heard uh, of uh, people being dismissed, others not getting paid. Um, the, the hospitality industry in Livingstone says uh, um, they will be put on false leave and the likes. Those are some of the reports we've received as the media. As a union, what reports have you received so far? And where does this put us? How, how do you analyze the, the effect of COVID-19 in Zambia? Well, it's, it's the way, you know, this, the, the impact of COVID-19 and the, 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 on the ground, we have felt it. Because in the moment uh, we started receiving cases, especially the first two cases, we met as a tripartite consultative labor council, the employers, ourselves and government to, make, to draw guidelines on how we can operate under the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh -huh. we, we saw it coming. We said, if there are companies wishing to put people on leave, the first leave should be a paid leave. Then after that, they should apply if they want to put people on forced leave. Uh -huh. And that should be case by case. The provisions of the Act, the Labor Code, are very, very clear. You have to apply to the minister for exemptions. But within the tripartite, we had a good report coming from the hospitality industry who said they are badly hit. The people are supposed to come into Zambia have even cancelled their bookings. Uh -huh. And then the, the, the industry is uh, not receiving customers because international routes have been cut, curtailed, and all those things. Uh -huh. In the period of COVID, what do we do? We said now, hospitality industry being a special case, uh -huh. can they be exempted and apply also? Not outright exemption, but they are supposed to apply case by case to the Ministry of Labor for exemptions. Uh -huh. And this is what we expected to get. But you have seen a situation where others have tried to run away from that to see, to, to, and they have taken the law in their own, in their own hands. Mm -hmm. But these are some of the things we need to do. But uh, shortly, you, you, you might have picked it from the Republican president's speech for the Labor Day, mm -hmm. who asked the corporate partners, ourselves again, to reconvene and analyze this. Now, we... The way we have treated our workers in some companies, we are treating our workers like the COVID has come to take over the companies. And the, we should have hope that the COVID can be conquered. Mm -hmm. Now we have taken it like it has come and I should keep my money as a company owner because this is the last time I'm having a company, the company is gone mm -hmm. because of COVID. We, have, we are myopic the way we are looking at the, the, the COVID attacks on, on us. 
we have no room that the COVID can, can be finished, can be, mm -hmm. can be fought. Now, in the situation where we fight the COVID, and then we sit down with the, the government as employees and say, such bad companies which didn't cooperate with the, these, regulations, these regulations we put in place, they have no room in the Zambia. Uh -huh. But who will they stay? So let the people not take us for granted by treating or coming out to look at the, the Zambia as a place where they could just come, siphon money and go, externalize resources. Uh -huh. When we have met with problems, good companies are even coming forth to donate. Exactly. Others have folded their hands. The issue is just to keep their money and then wait until the COVID, maybe it may take long and run away the money. And that's case. where you, you agree even with the, some, some of the Rupia Bandasi sentiments where you would say, Ni country, ya nyoko. Exactly. All those things. Yeah. <laughs> because now they are behaving like they are, it's their country. Exactly. It's our country. Another and then case. they are just investors who can cooperate yes. and we fight COVID together. Mopani Copper Mines. Yes. Any update on that saga? The ministers picked it, and then uh, you have heard of the uh, pronouncements of the reversals, pronouncements of the uh, asking somebody to act as CEO, mm -hmm. and so. But we are yet to to get the result of the social dialogue process because when it comes at ministerial level, from ministerial level, it has to get back now to the trade union uh, discussions. But so far. If things have been put on standstill and the, we still wait for social dialogue to take its, mm -hmm. its cause. But those are some of the issues which if people are cooperating and they are discussing, we just give it a chance to see how the discussion will yield results. Right. But I think our prayer is that we, we open up for, for a win-win situation right. so that the emotions Mopani had could be it could, it could be slowed down so that the workers also can also get the, what is due to them. And the, the COVID issue is just temporal. We should be very faithful as a Christian nation that we can conquer certain things and so, move on. So we, we, we mentioned uh, the hospitality industry and I also mentioned of people being, uh, you know, dismissed and the likes. And then we also got a, very, uh, a report <coughs> where uh, a certain company had decided on its own to quarantine its workers, for lack of a better term. Like, they tell them you're not going to go home for the next particular number of days. Yeah, but it's, if we, you know, certainly healthy issues, when you do them without consulting the, the health people, again, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. It's against human rights. But I think if the health people were involved and they gave direction to that effect. No health people. No, nothing. Yeah, I think that's also something that's uh, uh, abyss of the process. But if we, health people are involved and you quarantine the people and they know the facilities under the quarantine is going on, then you do that. Because you cannot create a, 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 your own hospital in a company. Unless you, it's a company of traditional doctors who are under certain license, but if you are a company producing certain things and you start behaving like you are medical people, then that's illegal. But the best thing is to involve the, the health people to come in and uh, check what, what ideas do you have about quarantine. Because mm -hmm. now if you quarantine, what is that? Is it, that is basically an is it illegal or imprisonment? Mm. Are you imprisoning the people? Or do you have ideas about that? And if you, you keep them in your same setup, what conditions are you keeping them? Is that a, do you have medical people employed at the company? Are the local authorities aware of what you're doing? I think those are some of the issues we can do. That. But I think from your side, those are things worth carrying a documentary about. You see how the exposure could be. Mm -hmm. But I think I should be talking to you in private time to see 
whether you can provide such details. We can still follow it up with the, the Minister of Health and the Minister of Labor to see whether the, that is the, the, the legal process was followed All right. to that effect. Still, in similar lines, we are looking at uh, also there are certain essential workers who are finding themselves operating from crowded places. For example, our colleagues uh, who are uh, trading in, uh, you know, foodstuffs like in markets and the likes, we have had the issue of social distancing being a problem. Yes, the Republican president is very concerned to the fact that uh, we can't have a total lockdown because there are people who also live on a hand-to-mouth basis and they need to make whatever little they can generate from uh, the small businesses. But what would be the solution to this, especially that we know that we want to be given uh, at least that uh, liberty to trade, but then there's the issue of not exactly adhering to the measures put in place? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, just a pity that it's uh, happening that way. But in a situation where you have got, uh, I've seen in some areas the Minister of Local Government was involving their market associations to cooperate and then to do certain things. But I think the, the illegal trading where we unorganized trading mm -hmm. is where we have a problem. But in marketplaces, the market associations are still helping us. We, uh, we have market associations who are affiliates to us, like uh, the AVEMA, Association of Vendors and Marketeers. Mm -hmm. They are affiliates of the ZCTO. We have the ASEA, Association for uh, informal sector in Zambia, they are also our affiliates, associate affiliates. So these, when they give us reports, their, their members are cooperating and then when we, we extend the hand to them to give face, face masks and the, their members, are, but the unorganized trading is what we can still, vending mm -hmm. is what we need to control. Yes, I still recall that time when cholera hit the Lusaka very hard, the vendors dispersed in the streets and then the streets were cleaned up. But you see the... Thanks to the soldiers. Are, yes, yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. But I think we should also not wait for soldiers just to come chase or us. We're being pushed around. We're being pushed. So I think people should just work with their associations. But then the unorganized trading is what is causing all this. But I think we, it's high time we acted because we, the impact of coronavirus is when it hits the certain area, it will make, it will make our health people be at risk because, because they are ready to, to save lives. Yeah. And then when they are ready to save lives, at the end of the day, they are getting sick again because yeah. they are vocational people and they are ready to work. And all that is a risk which we can avoid. But I think maybe it's, it, can still, it's, it's, it can still be uh, exposed, yes, where you could do, carry out a documentary and interview some of them. I saw one documentary where they were being interviewed, others were in masks. But the moment, uh, uh, the, the, moment the reporter stops talking to this person, she takes off the, ma the mask. But when the reporter is trying to read, they wear the mask and then they parade themselves. And they, they, so it's, it's, in a, it's an issue of acting, uh, acting for the yes, camera. Yes, so which is, a, again, a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, in some areas, which are even away from Osaka, you have seen how people are cooperating, yes. as though that's where the, the corona the has hit them hard. Exactly. Where it has hit us bad is where the behavioral change is needed. Mm. I think it's uh, our appeal again because those still come out our, our informal sector workers mm. our appeal is that let them cooperate we, with the health authorities. If there are some association members of ours who are responsible for these people should also provide education. I think we take responsibility and see if we can still appeal to them through our, the member associations. Okay. to do that. All right. There's been a lot of talk about frontline workers, that is uh, the health personnel, 
and uh, you know there's even been pleas and calls that uh, they should be given um, risk allowances. What about these other areas? I mean, we have, uh, like we mentioned, you know, that lady who's working in a shop where you need to buy the food from. Mm. We have the media themselves. We have our journalists every time in the news desk. I'm like, you people are close mm. to Chitalo, Chilufia. Yes. Keep a distance and the like. Uh, the, the focus is really, I think, largely on health practitioners. What about these other areas? I'd, I'd love to pick yes, up. Yes, uh, you see, it's, it's, it's uh, again the the question of when all of us join hands to help out, if people uh, skip in our hands, they get sick. The, you and me are keeping a social distance. Mm -hmm. But the health personnel won't keep a social distance where he, mm. he or she puts the injection on the broom and injects you from a distance. Mm -hmm. They will risk and come closer to you and touch you and use a stethoscope closer to you with those things. But I think at the end of the day, they are the ones touching you at the end of the day. So whilst there the, the are other issues, because those people, health people also need to eat, mm -hmm. the food producer should also bring the food. Exactly. The, 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 where they are throwing the garbage, the garbage collector needs to collect the garbage. Mm -hmm. Those are, then the truck driver needs to bring food from, coming from somewhere. And then all those who are working in the utilities companies like water, they have to supply water to the hospital. Zesco, they have to supply electricity to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then all those are is, is essential workers. They are working. But at the end of the day, the, the hero of the day now comes in the health worker who won't t keep a social distance mm. but who will touch you and by touching you they take risks mm. and then here's a situation where you it, 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 it goes like that but I think what it is at this stage it's a question of the, where the focus is mm -hmm. the focus is the, the people who are managing the cases and then we the, at company level like the movie TV, we should also look at the risks. What are the, what's the policy on the risk? Because there are certain policies which people, companies should have on risks. We are trade unions who are uh, representing those who are in utility companies, Zesco and the other things should also look, they look at the policy of risk. Mm -hmm. I would also urge you here to also look at your policy on the risk here. How is it? Because you are in contact with the people. Exactly. Uh, uh, what's your benefit out of that? I think let's also look at that we, we, and see how we can manage ourselves. Right. Yeah, because even at uh, health, because that's where the focus is. Whoever now gets sick, they have to power them at uh, level one hour, exactly. they power them at, then they, you see that the people can concentrate much on that. But for us, all of us should also now look at uh, the risks. Because even from the time the COVID started, you know how you guys have been troubling us. We are ever coming here, we are in contact and yes, so on. Yes. We are also at high risk and so on. But at the end of the day, when we mismanage, again, we we'll end up with a medical person. But our, my appeal, again, could go to companies. Let's review the policy of occupation uh, health and safety, to see beyond COVID, how do we operate? Uh -huh. Yeah, because these issues are common. We were, last year, we had, the other year we had cholera. Yes. Now we have uh, corona. Uh -huh. In Congo, the other year they had the Ebola. Ebola. And this year they had Ebola cases. Uh -huh. So I think those are some of the issues which can be like a wake-up call for companies, trade unions, to review the policy on the occupation risks so that we can move on. I think we, we, it also gives us some work yes. where we have to write to all our trade unions to give us even copies on how they can, their proposals they have on the occupation risks. But in the meantime, it's not too late mm -hmm. to invoke certain clauses of uh, conditions of service 
and update them so that the people are secured. Mr. Mkoka, I know it could be said on, on a very light note about how people, uh, so, some, some, some of you who are considered non-essential workers, have you noticed how companies have managed to flourish and still exist even without you being there? But with the coming of COVID-19 and this uh, picture that, like you've said, companies are seemingly feeling like the impact is probably bringing an end to certain uh, companies, there is uh, a fear in people that we could not exactly recover as much as we would want to. How secure are the people out there when it comes to jobs? Do we have the security that people will still have jobs or they, they, we're expecting huge job cuts? Well, it, it's um, just the issue of, uh, because COVID, the way it came, it affected the economy. It has affected the, the supply and demand in some areas, mm -hmm. yes. It's just maybe certain industry, like food industry, which are flourishing. Mm -hmm. But other productive sectors, even when you produce, the market is not ready to get the stuff for you. Mm -hmm. I think those are the things which could, which could be there. It's just a question of looking how we can rethink the whole thing. And then at country level, we can still develop strategies where we should also look at how do we... Uh, because this, we wouldn't have waited for, for COVID. Mm -hmm. Because there were certain indicators which would have made us run fast. Mm. Issues of climate change, issues of uh, future of work, like the use of robots, mm -hmm. yes. uh, issues of, uh, uh, we, we, apart from climate change, the, 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 the issues to, to do with the, 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 the privatization and so on. We would have looked at it. Now, from a Zambian scenario, you which I, also, I was also very happy to hear President uh, Lungu and the finance minister also talk about how we have to think beyond, uh, co beyond COVID. COVID yes. Yeah, because this, this issue is, we underrated it. Climate change is what I was trying to look for. Climate change, the future of work of robots, mm -hmm. and then the issues of uh, the, the, the droughts, and, which are part of climate change. Yes could have made us start looking at it from another angle. Now, COVID has come. It's a question of getting, getting back to certain policies we have, the climate change policy, mm -hmm. the future of work issues, where we have to now look at local industry. Mm -hmm. How do we promote local industry? Do we always rely on foreign foods? Why don't we create our industry? Is it just maize alone which we can also invest in? Why don't we look at other crops which can do well in Zambia? Uh -huh. All those things. And then it's try to reorganize ourselves, even from looking at the concept of fertilizer support. Uh -huh. Is it really helping us? Have we invested in the agriculture extension officers? If I, if I go to one agriculture extension officer and ask the people who got fertilizer support, uh, he in this area, how many are they? Mm -hmm. What did they produce? Now, what we know is that they, some people get the fertilizer yes. and they sell. Mm -hmm. You don't make it fall up because it's criminal. Mm -hmm. You get that fertilizer, you sell, you resell. If, you, if I get two top dressing and best dressing fertilizer, it should translate into something else. Exactly. If there was drought, I, did, I expect the agriculture extension officer in that area to give me a report that Mr. Uh, Mr. Bogos got two, four, four fertilizer. Mm -hmm. There was drought and here are the indicators. You even have photographs exactly. of uh, what Mr. Bogos got. And so are you saying that there are people out there who are not exactly doing what We need to? to change our area of product. This, they look at the support people get mm -hmm. to translate into productivity. Are we just going to look at maize? Give them, if they are in a certain area which can produce rice, mm -hmm. say apply this in this rice area. Give them inputs in the rice direction. But you, 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 you. So I think those are the areas we need to look at now, looking at where we are going now. As I mean, it's a work, 
go, going beyond uh, to beyond COVID, we need to start looking at it from a, a productive Zambia. We have think tanks, and you get the privilege to meet even with high-profile people, the, the, the law in, um, enforcers themselves, the yes. changers, the, the legislators. Where do we get it wrong? If we, we just need to change the game, because now it's a, it's a political issue now. Mm -hmm. it's, we have a political will. If President talked about it, the Minister of Finance talked about it. Let's take advantage of that. Let's also look at the coming up with a consortium of uh, brands, like the way it is in South Africa, there's NEDLAC, National uh, 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 Business Forum, where you have sectors from the employee, employers, employees, uh, business people, government, and so on. They meet, make strategies, and the draw parameters for that operation for that particular year. All right. It's not the way they are able to do that. When the Minister of Finance makes a budget, it makes that budget from the feeding, from, from the input from such a sector, mm -hmm. the net lag. They feed into that. So that the budget is even expected. You even know what is expected of the budget. All right. You even know whether people will still get increments or not. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you work together so that we are not moved by certain uh, impulse responses. Okay. So you know, if I don't do it, then people will say this, we may not get votes from this. Let's just move like that. At the end of the day, all Zambians will be responsible. All right. And let us also allow the issues of coming up with different ideologies, mm -hmm. political ideologies, where the politicians and the political parties should not be able to say, mm -hmm. if we have got a Labour Party, let, the, let us have a Labour Party thinking in that Labour Party party. If we have got the socialists, let them be thinking as socialists. Exactly. If we have got capitalists, let, the, let, us, let them be thinking as capitalists. If we have got Democrats, let them be thinking like Democrats. Not the way of just changing because this party is in power, and then I should change Echitenge and join like that. And so, no, this, uh, let's people look at it from the angle of ideological system of governance where we should not always look at the politics every time. Politics will retard us. All right. if, let us give praise where it's due. If this party has done very well, we say, no, they have done very well. Here's a, part, here's a chance now where we would say, let Zambians now start looking at it from a game change. All right. Because we have a political will of saying, let's think outside the box. As we wind up, yes. what are you as a union, uh, how are you coming in to, you know, just help out and fight in this COVID-19? Uh, obviously, we are, our, our members who are non-essential are working from home. And then from the labor uh, definitions, mm -hmm. essential workers are those who cannot go on strike, but they can belong to trade unions. Mm -hmm. Non-essential are those who can strike, who can uh, do what, and they can do other things. Those are the people where they are, set, the, the essential workers are those, when you withdraw them, then uh, life You're is lost. Yes. Not crippling, but life is lost. When you withdraw them, mm. there will be no one to fix the oxygen on somebody who is ah, on the ventilator. Yes, yes. When they go on strike, those people will die. Mm. Those are essential workers. When you withdraw them, there will be no power. The Zesco person will be there. Mm -hmm. When you withdraw them, there will be no water. Those are essential. Okay. They need to be there at every time. And the non-essential are those. The, the wheels of production is there. They are quite productive, these who are non-essential. Mm -hmm. They are very productive. Those are the ones who have even crippled the, the economy. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. So the, it, things are, are complementary. Yes. Those who are non-essential are those who are driving the economy, who are, who are at the center of production of goods and services, but they have slowed down. And, and that's why it is now. Right. Because we have now relied on those who are life-saving essential workers. The productive uh, non-essential afforded their 
arms because we do not want them to flood the states exactly. because they may transmit the COVID. Mm -hmm. So the best thing for us to do is to ensure that we help those who are in hospitals, not so that they don't have more cases. All right. Yes. I'd like to thank you so much for making time to join us on Blunt Talk this evening on uh, May Day, when maybe you must have been resting. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here. We dedicated this day for the same. Mm -hmm. From morning, we have been trotting with uh, Mr. Chembe here, from, who has been escorting me from uh, the other day. We, we are in a movie the other day. Yes. And then yesterday, today, we are just trotting around. So it has been a pleasure. We have wasted it the day properly, yes. which is good Thank because you. it's a substitute. Because it's a substitute of other. We have celebrated everybody in yes. style. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. And that's just about all we had for you this evening. This has been Blunt Talk. We've been looking at Labor Day amidst COVID-19. It surely will be remembered. 2020. It was there, but not exactly celebrated the way that we always do it. This has been Charity Tonga. My guest has been Mr. Cosmas Mbuka from Zambia, uh, from ZCTU, Zambia Congress of Trade Unions. Thank you so much for watching. Good evening. Zambia, Christian nation. Yeah, yeah. Give us, you will give us. <laughs> this is Zambia, the home of copper. Zambia, Christian nation. Yeah, yeah. Give us, you will give us. <laughs> this is Zambia. Hi, good morning. Oh, hi, mom. Hi. So, Don Jaime, is this?